What's up guys, John here and welcome back to John Moon Studios. In today's video, I'm going to give you the basics on the visibility options and preferences you have inside of Cubase, so let's get right to it. So for this video, I decided to use my film scoring template, which has over 800 tracks. And if you're wondering how I have 800 tracks inside of my Cubase session, I'm going to make a video in the future showing you my custom PC that allows me to host all of these sample libraries and essentially have over 800 tracks of sample libraries in this session. So the reason why I chose this is so you can see how the visibility section or preferences inside of Cubase works and how you can use it to your advantage to hide tracks so that you only see tracks that you're working with and your project window isn't cluttered with things that you're not using at the moment. So the first thing you need to do is you need to open up the left tab. So it's up here on the top right corner. You're gonna hit that and it opens up this left tab and then you're gonna see two tabs within this little section here called inspector and visibility. We're gonna go to the visibility section and here you can see all of the tracks that you have active that's shown with a check mark next to their names as well as any color coding that you have on the right side here. So I'm gonna go ahead and scroll right back up and I'm gonna show you how you can just quickly disable tracks that you don't wanna see. So I've disabled my wind instruments. I'm gonna disable my brass instruments and I'm gonna disable my percussion instruments. So let's say I'm just working with everything but percussion, brass, woodwinds. Here I have now only the instruments that I do want to see. Again, super easy to just kind of click off the ones that you don't want to see and click the ones that you do want to see. Again, making sure that the ones that you do want to see have the check mark and the ones that don't, don't have the check mark. So let's say you've disabled all of these and as you can see, I had to do some scrolling to get to the next section. If I want them to reappear once again, you're going to go up here to where it says configuration. So you're going to see this little house looking like object a pentagon and then this other object right next to it and this is what's going to help you enable all those tracks again without having to go clicking one by one if you don't see this option here you're going to go all the way to the right to this little gear sign you're going to click it and then you're going to go to where it says track visibility configurations you're going to click that and then that will appear and you're gonna see that it comes up on the top left corner here. If you hit this little house here, you could just hit show all tracks and now you've enabled all the tracks that you've hidden. So for example, I had this input output channel track disabled. So I'm just gonna go ahead and disable it again, but it's much easier to just turn all of them on and then just disable that one track instead of going one by one. You can also do things here if you open up this options is show only selected tracks. So for example, if I highlight the piccolos and the flutes and I go here and I do show only selected tracks, it's going to only show me those tracks inside of Cubase. So I could just go back up here and then just do show all tracks again and hide the one I don't want to be seen. You have other options like you can hide those selected tracks. So now these tracks are going to disappear out of my session. I'm gonna go ahead and switch them back on. The other options we have is show tracks with data. So anything that has data in it. So for example, I have the outputs of all of these instruments down here. This is considered data because this is their volume automation. So if I just go here and deselect winds, and I'm gonna do show tracks with data, it's only gonna show me all of my outputs because again, it's showing you volume data here. If I have instruments, so if I put select all, so if I have regions in these instruments as well, this is considered tracks with data. So if I go up here and I do tracks with data, it's gonna show me my outputs and the two tracks that I have with regions in it. In other words, data, it has information. It has some kind of information telling this instrument to do something. So I'm gonna go ahead and click show all again. You have the option to do show tracks with data at the cursor location. So your cursor location is not your mouse, it's the actual cursor inside of Cubase. So if I lay it right here, right after the region of the piccolo, it's not gonna pick it up if I do 
the show track at cursor position. But if I move it back to measure three, now we have some activity in those tracks and when I hit it, it's going to appear again. You can also do things between locators, which is your cycle markers. So if I move this cycle marker out here, anything within the region of the cycle markers will be shown when I hit show tracks with data between locators. And then you have show tracks with selected events. So if you want to see particular instruments, so let's say you go on a hunt. So I'm going to go ahead and click show all tracks. And then let's say I have a region in my bassoons, in my clarinet, in my brass, and then something in the percussion section. If I click, I'm holding shift as I'm clicking this now, click here, and then I'm going to click this one, this one, this one, and this one. And I do show tracks with selected events. It's going to show me the tracks with selected events here. And as you can see, they only took off the tracks with events. So notice how I had more instruments in the folder, but it's only using the ones that have events in it because I selected it. This is the power of using the visibility filters inside of Cubase. It'll be pretty daunting to kind of go through 800 tracks searching for the one that you need when you could just let's say highlight a track or just kind of use something like show tracks uh, with data at the cursor position because you're not going to have all 800 instruments or so, you know, playing at the same time. So it's a very cool trick to kind of keep under your belt and learn how to build some kind of workflow over it because this will help save so much time, especially with larger sessions. So the same thing can be done in the mixer window. So if I go ahead and pull up the mixer window here, and we see we have on top the same exact tool on top of the mix console. So again, if you don't see it, just hit the gearbox and then go for channel visibility configuration. And the same thing applies here. So show channels with data, cursor position, locator, things like that. But in the mixer, even though the project window has it too, which is this other little box here, this one has it here and it's useful to use in the mixer, I believe, because now here you can actually filter out your channels by the types of channels. So if I deselect all of them, mind you, this is independent from the actual project window. So only because I deselected it in the mixer, I can still see it in the project window. So in my case, I have a dual monitor system. I have my project window on one of my monitors and then I have my mixing console in another. So if I disable all the tracks in the mix console, I could still see all of them inside of my other monitor. So for mixing purposes, I probably just want to see, let's say my instrument channels. So when I click instrument channels, I'm only going to see the instrument tracks that I have inside of this project. So if I scroll to the left and right, you're going to see that it's only showing me where the audio is happening for these instruments. Since I've done submixes of these large folders, all of my piccolos are in one place, flute, oboe, all of my instruments have their own fader so I can individually control their volumes here. Let's say I want to do things like my MIDI channels, which is all the instruments itself, the articulations. Now I can see the entire folder structure in here, the way you see it in the project folder. Even though there's no point for me to see this in the mixing console because this is only sending MIDI, in this case, in the mix console, I don't want to see MIDI channels. I probably just want to see instrument, audio, uh, probably any group channels because I have submixes of the entire stems. So if we go all the way to the right here, you can see that I have a submix for the entire wind section, the entire brass percussion, any other things that I have here available. And then let's say you have any effects channels like reverb and stuff and VCAs. And of course my output, this is probably all I want to see when I'm doing my mixing. I don't want to see all the MIDI tracks because that's not going to help me. I can't do any processing on those MIDI tracks because it's only sending MIDI information. So that's pretty much it for the visibility settings inside of Cubase. If you have any questions throughout the video, just go ahead and drop your comments down below and I'll get to them as soon as possible. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the ring button so you don't miss any of my weekly videos. Also, don't forget to check out the John Moon Studios store. I have a variety of merch with the official John Moon Studios logo on it. So go ahead and check it out. Also down below in the description, I'm going to leave a link to my Patreon for just a dollar a month. You can help support the channel and all of your donations are greatly appreciated. As always, don't forget to share with your musician friends. I'll see you guys soon.